to our respected principal sir and to all the panelists over here. Uh, today is going to be the last day for our FDP session. I hope till late, if the six sessions that we have conducted till late, you have thoroughly enjoyed it. I know, we know that there are some connectivity issues that are happening. We have kept the waiting room on. As soon as participants are coming in the waiting room, we are continuously adding them. So there is no point of hesitating to come to the waiting room if you get disconnected for a time once. Okay, please bear with us for this time because you know huge connectivity issues are happening and we both of us, Rudipta and myself are uh, working on this. As soon as we are finding anyone in the waiting room, uh, we are actually adding them. And uh, we, since we have Mr. Prakash Dev, uh, Prakash Dev Roy today with us, uh, he is the panelist for the last day. Yeah, and uh, all the six, uh, seven sessions that we will be covering after the, after the end of this day, whatever questions from any corner, whatever doubts you have in your mind, please try to clarify because this panelist will not be available from tomorrow onwards. So please jot down your questions and uh, we will try to entertain or take more and more questions. So try to put your questions in a sing if it is, if it is possible in a single liner or in two liners. Right. Thank you so much. Over to you, Prakash sir. And one more thing I forgot to mention, sorry. The assessment process and the feedback process process will be shared at the end of this program. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, Prakash sir, please continue. Sure. Uh, thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. So today's session will be on technology transfer and more specifically on university technology transfer. So the first question is that, you know, what do we understand by technology transfer? So George Nicholson, George Nicholson is uh, he is known as the father of post-it stamps or post-its, uh, small papers that we use to post a particular note in our desk regularly in office spaces. He mentioned that, you know, research transforms money into knowledge and technology transforms knowledge into money. So it's basically what we are researching on, what we are working on and, uh, and how we can and commercialize our knowledge into money, specifically in academia and a research framework. And uh, a technology transfer, there is a process for technology transfer. People start from, you know, at uh, from any point of the wheel. That uh, in the left side you will see a wheel over here. So someone speaks about. You know, first we can you take our ideas haphazard. So many people feel it's a property protection then. If, if it is done in an organized way, people first, you know, work on discovery, a mining process to understand what all assets they have. Like yesterday I was mentioning on startup, how they do a landscape or a white space to understand what they have. Then comes the disclosure process. It discloses to a particular cell. It's majorly known as technology transfer office. A evaluation takes place. Protection happens. Then it markets. And then it uh, that IP is licensed based on which you know if it is licensed outside the direct revenue is generated, or if it is work within the university with a with a small startup that is incubated within the university, then product development takes place, then public use and financial returns happens. So the the, the, the next most pertinent question when I'm speaking about a university academy of space comes in that you know what is the difference between a knowledge transfer and a technology transfer or how a knowledge transfer moves into a technology transfer. So in that case what we see is that you know technology transfer happens only when the assets are defined like you know first uh, our knowledge is mined, understood, a boundary is drawn around the knowledge, the knowledge gets protected so basically an asset is, is created and after the asset is created it gets transferred right. So from knowledge, when the protection happens, a particular IPR assets is uh, comes into existence. Once the IPR assets comes into existence, then it is ready for transfer. And then how do we transfer it or commercialize it? So we, we can commercialize it, uh, commercialize it by licensing. We can commercialize it by assignments, by collaboration contracts, by material transfer agreements, sponsored research agreement, consultancy agreement, or franchising and yeah, establishment of spin-offs of startups. So these are all mostly legal way or you know methodologies that uh, our university technology transfer team or office uses to commercialize the knowledge base that they are developing within the university. 
now when i am speaking about technology transfer within a university or a academia from where does it start the idea the basic core idea revolves around you know protecting the ip assets that is mostly filing of patents then preventing others from you know, others from actually taking the moral rights out of it and you know then profiting from the assets right so wipo has given a wonderful template for universities and research institutions basically pointers around which a policy can be built the first thing revolves around governance and ownership of the ip basically who will own the intellectual property in most cases it is a university which are which is the owner of the ip assets and only the inventor gets his name the moral right his name is mentioned in the application and there are specific uh, universities where the process is more developed it is actually assigned to a particular holding company uh, within the university which, which deals with all the commercial nature of the ipr so that the not for profit nature of university remains intact rights of use who all can use it and how it can use it how they can use it publication and how to publish it or if there is a university publication framework where you are while if any professors or students are publishing any paper if they are you know planning to file a patent whom to reach out to and who will actually go through the publication to understand whether there is any patentable content or not non disclosure like you know what to disclose and when to disclose and to whom to disclose and there should be an established framework and policy around that then comes in trade secrets how to protect the uh, trade secrets of the company of the university and the products of the research they are working in probably if you are working in a very confidential project of uh, uh, probably a ministry of defense project or probably a real government of india project in that case probably you are not allowed to divulge certain information in that case how to you know protect the those information to get such multi contracts research contracts as they then this is contracts are there then there should be a policy and commercialization why if i must if i intellectual property is commercialized or a patent this license who will get what percentage of the licensing revenue then you know when i'm speaking about commercialization of wife i think then comes distribution of revenue there is an ip portfolio maintenance fee for each and every patent that is protected and ip portfolio maintenance fee goes in then when it comes to you know bio related uh, academia and knowledge there is a lot of work that goes on in the traditional or protecting of traditional knowledge and registering genetic resources last it conflict of interest and conflict of commitments so that you know no there is no conflict of interest and conflict of commitments while working for a sponsored research project major and then comes the dispute resolution process this is a uh, you know overall picture of how a university technology transfer policy template might look look like and this is a very top level view that that has been suggested by wipo now prakash uh, yes please can you be little oh, loud okay sure uh, am i audible now that's uh, okay so next comes in uh, next comes in the operation of uh, technology transfer office within academia framework what we see over here is uh, there are three separate blocks like you know how the university operates then the technology transfer office ttto is established within the university framework and then comes the industry now if you look at the what are the activities of ttto majorly there are two fold activities one they will run you know multiple activities within a year and based on which the patents will be filed and who are the target audience for activities the most is the researchers within the university or the professors and the spin offs so once they once they scout proper researchers and you know work on their research output the research output is screened to generate patents right and once the patents uh, portfolio is uh, established with continuous interaction between the uh, research output part and the tto office now what to do is this assets created this assets will be either licensed to established firm to generate direct revenue out of it or this assets are transferred to spin off or small small startups which are incubated within the university framework so this is a you know overall holistic a top level view of how a tt office operates to support established firms or, or you know direct sale and commercialization of ip or help startups to you to establish and incubate within the university framework and and how it interacts with the regular affairs of university 
and uh, these are few numbers about you know this is mostly limited to us and these are few numbers about how technology transfer has been contributing to the economy and how it's operating and if you see that you know from 1996 uh, these numbers are they have been taken from uh, the uh, association for university technology managers uh, they are a global association where technology managers of a uh, entity or technology transfer officers of multiple universities uh, they meet and discuss uh, about their pro future processes and policies and uh, their governance framework. Uh, and uh, if you see from 2000, uh, in 1996 to 2017, what we see is that uh, technology transfer has directly contributed around dollar 1.7 trillion to US GDP, gross industrial output. It's, it's actually huge. And uh, uh, dollar 865 billion to US uh, gross dom domestic product and 5.9 million jobs were supported and then when you look at these numbers these numbers are huge and then if you look how the indian uh, indian universities are working or the academia is positioned basically we are not not at all you working of you know uh, at a full efficiency level at this point in time because the ground level processes and policies are not yet set so we see over here around the uh, 4,20,000 inventions were disclosed and 1 lakh US patent issues. 1 lakh US patent issues, it should mean it's, it's actually a huge number to research institutes. They supported 13,000 startups. Now, if I'm speaking about startups, we should always, uh, I, should, I should draw an example of how Google was started from the PhD thesis. And uh, the professor under whom the thesis was done still owns a part of, uh, you know, he has some uh, honorable equity of Google and which which is actually a massive massive amount uh, today and uh, okay fine and then again if you see the numbers that how much amount of US US university technology transfer licenses are provided to you know to startups and small companies actually helping the economy of the country it's around 67 percent 200 percent plus drugs were developed 200 percent drugs were developed and if I'm looking for only the year of 2018, in 2018, 17,000 US patent was filed and 7,265 US patent was issued. These numbers are all to research institutes and universities only. There was, and 9,350 license options were executed, 828 products was created, and more than 1,000 startup was framed, and around uh, 71,000 billion research expenditures were done. Now, if you see this particular number, 71.7 71 billion research expenditure, this is not wholly funded by US government. These research expenditures also come from revenue that is generated out of technology transfer offices by selling and commercializing the product or selling their stake in the startup companies that are incubated within the uh, technology within the uh, university premises under the supervision of technology transfer office. So uh, if you are looking at a very close resemble of such framework that is already operational in India, we can speak about the framework of uh, IIT Kharagpur, the sponsor research and uh, the seed cell over where you know startups are incubated, patents are filed and the startup can freely use those patents for a you know essence of a particular percentage of equity and operate out of that framework. Probably it is not that much comparable and profitable at, at par with universities, uh, US universities, but they are still uh, actually moving towards that direction. Now, here, here there is a snapshot of the IP annual report of 2017-18 to give a brief understanding of, you know, the number of patents that are filed by Indian universities. The IITs have collectively filed 540 patents. Next is a private university. Amity University has filed 119 patents. Savita, 118 patents. SNM University, 81. Bharat University, 66. And the list goes on. If you see that, you know, out of probably top 10, the lowest is the KCT College of Technology. And they have filed 40 patent applications. So, you know, our Indian, comp uh, Indian research, in, uh, research institutes and academy and universities filing patents? The answer is yes. Are they commercializing and helping startup? The answer is not yet known. Because, you know, they are doing probably doing in bits and pieces, but, you know, things have not yet come up. Yeah. 
and in the left what we see is that you know if i look into a scientific and uh, research and development organization the, the obviously csir and drdo leads the list with uh, uh, with 176 and 126 patents now i will speak about uh, in in rdc national research development corporation they are mostly into commercializing technology government technologies and over here what we see is the technology sources for nrdc what are the technology sources for nrdc csir supplies 44 percent of the technologies then uh, icar indian council of agricultural research supply 12 percent icmr indian council of medical research six percent they are 29 percent university is only seven percent and ps is two percent so if you see this sector so if we if university and academia is not into technology transfer directly at this point in time they can obviously contact with nrdc to get that te uh, technologies commercialized at their end so nrdc is into mostly into uh, technology transfer of uh, assets within india and here is there, there is a graph of number of technology license and assigned by nrd see and obviously we see since 2017 there is a huge spike in numbers when it comes to technology assigns and technology license because you know obviously it has been focused on helping the startup and msme sme sectors with the uh, technology and guidance so that can uh, actually help on aware of the country and if we see the uh, uh, yeah, yeah, is, Top one so this to help our startups that is being incubated in our, within our university premises. Uh, we don't see much of activities that is happening place in our state. So overall, if you're looking for university technology transfer, huge number of uh, huge amount of revenue can be generated, which will actually finance the entire other research and development activities of the university. But but it should should not be. It is not a one day work. It's a gradual work. So it starts with building up the process and policies. We start with building up the culture, and slowly then moving towards, uh, yeah, making it a, it a standard practice within the within the university, to which uh, revenue and a huge amount of money can be generated, and also market startups can be included. Uh, thank you. This has been uh, this is two questions now. So please uh, let me know that if there is any question in around this topic, please. Dr. Sir, before we take the question, please, uh, we have an important announcement. Oh, I'll request sure. our principal, yeah, sure, sir, please, just for two minutes. Sure. I'll request our honorable principal, sir, to make the announcement. Principal, sir, please. can find him here. Uh, principal sir, can you hear me? Am I audible? Should it just check it with the principal sir is in the list or not? Sir, not available. It might have been. Sir, is not available now. It might happen he got disconnected. Anyways, Professor, you continue with the session. Once Sir will join with us, I will interrupt in between and then Sir will go, Sir will make an, an announcement over there. Right? Sure, sure, sure. So please raise your hand if you have any questions and queries in around the presentation. So I do understand it was a, a little fast track, so but still, okay, sure.
हेलो हेलो यस प्लीज हाँ सर गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग माय क्वेश्चन इज दैट व्हाई इंडियन यूनिवर्सिटीज और इंस्टीट्यूशंस आर हैविंग वेरी लेस कंसिस्टेंट लाइक व्हाट इज सोन इन क्लास व्हाट इज द मेन प्रॉब्लम एंड हाउ टू इंक्रीज इट द मेजर प्रॉब्लम वाज इस मेजरली द लैक ऑफ अवेयरनेस सो slowly the indian university is uh, catching up because this entire culture was developed over you know decades where universities build their ipr cells filing for patents then commercializing it uh, it's, it is not a one year or five years plan because i uh, probably right by right this time you all know that uh, an average time period a minimum time period to get a patent grant is around 5 years 5 to 6 years average so to, today we file a patent it will mm-hmm. take around 6 years to get a grant once you get a get a grant then if if you have not built a particular portfolio like if you did not put it around a particular product it, it, it is very hard to get a buyer so you know it's, it it will take around a 10 years time at least if we establish a, a, a establish a process today to get okay. a particular portfolio to commercialize it so so that's why india university initially the focus was was mostly on you know doing research and uh, spreading of education and right now when we see that we, you know it's uh, there are possible avenues to generate income and and self sustaining of universities come comes in right now the universities are focusing on technology transfer because indirectly technology transfer helps economies of the country it helps to build the it helps the smes and mmes with products and technology that can, that they can go and direct Sell in the market. So okay. basically, we come, we came little late, but yes, we are working around. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Jayati Chatter, for that, please go ahead. Yeah, sir. Uh, my question is uh, regarding your previous question, uh, intellectual property and startup. Um, that uh, we actually studied that. Uh, for a startup to get registered the invention must be innovative and scalable now since startup normally is initiated in a small scale so is it like that that before registration the scalability needs to be proved and if it is so then is there any capacity benchmark that up to which level it needs to be scaled no uh, so okay i got uh, this is a very good question so Uh, before uh, registration, whether scalability to be proved, no. If there is a capacity benchmark, the answer is also no. What they generally do is that you know, with their uh, with the report they are submitting about the startup and the product they are working, they will give a revenue forecast or a market capitalization forecast over a three or four years time, which actually shows the scalability of the product and proves on paper that it can be worked with. So it's it's more like a thesis they submit. and a market research report that is submit so this is the white space here we are working and we probably we will be gaining that this much market space within this period of time or we will be covering this much geographic area so okay. hope that answers okay. the question thank you sir thank you okay sir okay progress no more hand please go ahead uh, okay so uh, so any more questions no go ahead no no i i am done with the presentation inagi sir hello ha uh. i am done with the presentation okay okay anyone because there is a time for principal sir to log in prakash uh. prakash gorav you Uh, okay, sir. Sir, please. Uh, yeah, I I have a question. When you said university, so who are the inventors from the university? It is like professors are filing. Like I have seen, uh, you have showed the list of universities who are filing patents. So, uh, who are the inventors in these patents? Like, uh, is it like professors or students or sometimes both? the professors and the students like most of the universities in the you know we they have the uh, final year projects for their students so let's say if a university want to or the or the college wants to file they, file, they see something innovative there and they want to file a patent so who will be the owner of uh, that patent so this is 
a question I have. Sir, uh, th thank you for asking the question, sir. Uh, I, I was while I was doing a small, uh, you know, a search to understand what is the uh, who all are filing it. So it's mostly professors who are filing in the name of the inventors of professor. I don't see name of students over there. But technically, if I if you look at a very transparent policy, if a student is working on that particular project, so his name should be there. So why why this is happening? If you ask me, that this is happening because there is no strong policy for that particular university wherein the wherein the it will capture within the within the particular you know patenting framework who is the actual inventor is. And in one or two cases, what I see, the patents are not even filed in the name of the universities. It is getting filed in the name of the dean or the professor, which is not right because they are putting their name as applicant. So one particular case that I saw last day and I was uh, explaining during my earlier session was that in, for New Horizon College, the entire thing is named of, is filed in the name of one particular person. And who is the, practically the uh, dean of New Horizon College. So this is happening because with the absence of uh, a, a strong policy. Ideally, it should be filed all theses or research publications or any research that is being taken place using the assets of the university or any university premise should be scanned for intellectual property assets, be it patent or be it copyright, then it should be analyzed whether the, it has any commercial viability or not. Then a patent should be filed before publishing of any pub, you know, research publication or final year thesis. And also, sir, I will request you to, you know, share with us your experience in Stanford University. Yeah, so so not only Stanford, most of the U.S. universities, they have a very formal way of, you know, uh, getting the uh, invention assignment done at the time of uh, admission from the student. So whenever you you get admitted in most of the US universities or the European universities, then as part of the admission procedure, you have to, you know, assign your rights to the universities, meaning, you know, if during the course of your, uh, I mean, uh, during your uh, uh, course of your work or the project assignment while you are doing any invention or, or any any project work in the university if you are coming out with any invention then you are assigning that rights to the university meaning the university can go ahead and file the application patent application but you will be always retained as an inventor in that application uh, coming to most of the universities in india or the colleges in india i have never seen uh, you know a formal policy as prakash you rightly said that you know we don't have the formal policy you know where the students are asked to sign at the time of admission and therefore you know we don't have the clarity like who is owning the invention like you have said that you some of the inventions you have seen patent applications you have seen where you know the application was uh, filed on the name of the dean no no there is a question they, they can this can always be disputed considering the fact whether the dean was the inventor in that application or in that invention or not and if he's not then i don't think that you know that's the right way of filing the application so i completely agree with you that you know this is a time where if the universities are coming with their TTO or like the any patent cell, then the first and foremost thing is they should come out with a very clear policy, you know, uh, uh, capturing the fact who is uh, retaining the app, uh, invention, who is going to be the in, in, uh, inventor of the application. Uh, whether the universities are going to be the applicants or the or the assignee of this invention. So all that thing should be very clearly captured as part of the uh, policy. And, and this is what I always recommend to the universities. And whenever, you know, I, I talk to the universities or the colleges, I always, I strongly recommend that first thing is if they are coming out with the TTOs or, or any patent uh, filing uh, stuff, then the first thing is they need to have the formal policy because that will always avoid any future dispute. So, and at the time of, you know, the, as you as you mentioned in your presentation, one of the uh, uh, expectation is to go ahead and and to make this technology mature, and then you can license it to industry, and that is where you build the industry uh, industry academia relationship. So one of the objective is definitely you you file the patents, and then you try to find the collaborator with whom you can you know uh, uh, work and and whom you can license the technology. There are many companies like big companies you can see top. 10 companies in the world, they are, you know, heavily dependent on the universities sometimes uh, for some of their niche research. And, and Prakash, I, I, maybe I have missed, have you covered this Google, uh, 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 you know, uh, how, how did 
Google evolve from Stanford and and what does the patent assignment right somehow I I miss no, so I, I I am not going into detail but I did mention that you know the entire work came out of a research PhD thesis in Stanford and I have not I'm not went into the detail that how the company was incorporated and what happened later. Yeah, and this is where like Stanford still has a small portion of equity in Google. So right. this is the beauty of the entire, you know, industry academia collaboration ship. So when you have a good technology, you have the strong patents with you, you just have to find the, you know, good collaborator with whom you can work and they are interested in taking your technology and then you can definitely convert into a complete business model where professors can also be engaged. They can be like, you know, one of the board members of this company. Lots of things can be evolved about this industry academia relationship so only thing is setting the right policy setting uh, filing the right patents uh, uh, making your technology matured and then go for the complete uh, commercialization of this technology yes, this sir. is what so, i wanted to say yes sir because see if you what we see today in indian companies also like for reliance also they are appointing uh, professors at board members because yeah at, at, at some point in time everyone realizes that you know companies are more focused with commercialization and earning of revenue than you know to focus on actual actual uh, knowledge centric uh, developments or knowledge centric research for that they are looking into universities and 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 it is not like that they are not rewarding universities and universities are getting rewarded appropriately that today also if i look into i am kolkata they are startup incubation cell. They retain one or two, three, four, or five percent or ten percent of each and every startup that they are actually incubating within their premises. And these are actually generating, establishing a non-linear revenue channel for the university, which actually helps the university to undertake more uh, cost incentive researches in future. Okay. Pinaki sir. Yeah. Pinaki sir. Just give me two more minutes. Yeah, uh, we couldn't connect with the principal sir. Principal sir has conveyed that he is unable to come into this forum because of internet issues, connectivity issues. So he has conveyed. He has told me to convey his message to you all. Uh, yeah, hopefully you can recall on day three we had with us uh, Mr. Meghdoot Roy Choudhury, who is the director Global Operations Techno India Group. Today he tried his level best to uh, come here to uh, be present in the closing ceremony, but he couldn't make it um, take out his time for his visit schedule. So he has sent a wonderful message for all of us. Along with this message, he has also sent an important announcement for you all. And uh, he has a video clip for from his end. Uh, I'm sure you will all like this video clip once uh, we will play it. Okay, let's go for the video clip. Shudipta, please play the video. Shudipta? Yes, yes. Just play the video, please. It's audible. Yeah, yeah, it's audible. No, no, you, uh, Shudipta, we can't hear this. Yeah? Meghdoot's voice is not audible. Uh, yeah, his voice is not audible. Sudipta, would you able to hear him. this? Sudipta, would you, would you able to yeah. hear this? Yeah, we have checked it. In mobile phone, it was working actually. No, at this point, from the Sudipta's point of uh, Sudipta's end, is there any problem or not that I'm asking? Sudipta, yeah, 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 yeah. Stop. Yes, Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to personally congratulate all of you for completing this five-day FDP on intellectual property rights. I'm very sorry that I could not be with you today uh, for the closing ceremony, but here's a little video message for me. Uh, I was there on one of the days and I thoroughly enjoyed my time that I spent with all of you. 
and given the kind of time and place that we're going at, where everything around the world is going digital, we need to make sure that our property rights, that our intellectual property, our patents, our trademarks, and most importantly, what's in our head, our ideas, uh, find a place for it which is solid, which has legal standing. And for that, uh, it's very important that we understand what our rights are. So in that respect, I would like to applaud the administration of Technomain Salt Lake for putting this FDB together. And on request of the principal, Dr. Opijit Kaur, I would like to congratulate you for the beginning of the patent cell of Technomain Salt Lake. I hope that it shows a new way forward in the way that we look at intellectual property rights and not just us as uh, the administration, the management, the uh, faculties and teachers, but also the students themselves, so that when they go out into the world, they truly understand what it means like to have uh, their property rights in place for every one of their incredible uh, ideas that they come up with. So thank you very much for having me with you. And uh, again, sorry, I could not be there in person. A very good morning to all my dear professors, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Thank you so much, yeah. Mr. Midhut Rajadari, for this uh, wonderful announcement. And hopefully, all the uh, members of this cell will try to try their level best uh, to make it successful. Now we have got for all the seven days, and before the seven days also, we have got Dr. Pinaki Ghosh with us. He was with us uh, as a mentor of this entire program. I'll request, sir, and hopefully with this cell, he is going to be associated. Uh, I request sir to share a few words about this sale and he has his guidelines about this sale. Thank sir, you. Please. Yeah, thank you. Am I audible? Yes. Sir. Yeah, yes, yes sir. absolutely. Okay. So this is a great announcement that one of the Indian institute, like Technical University, our Technical Institute, they are going to start a IPR sale, intellectual property sale, uh, within the Techno campus of Salt Lake. So I hope this uh, opportunity, all of you can uh, uh, take care, take advantage of this. And as the panelists also discussed, the best practices of Indian universities, the best practice of the US universities, the best practice of the US colleges and Indian colleges uh, here. So learning from all these things that we need to uh, uh, establish a guideline, we need to establish a formal processes uh, within techno for going forward so that everyone uh, can use this sale. Anyone can use this sale for uh, filing patents and all these kind of things. So this is basically, <clears throat> this sale will primarily focus on the, on, the, on the patent filing, on the patent side and copyright and trademark. And, the, and above all, this sale also will be, uh, will be will work with the management to establish an IPR policy across techno. So through policy and through guidelines, it will be established very soon. Now I'll open to all the participants because you heard about all the best practices of the US universities, US colleges and uh, uh, from the panelists. So please raise your hand if you have any suggestion, any questions of this functioning of this IPR sale. Uh, so that this IPS cell is for everyone, for the students, for the faculty, for the non-teaching staff, for the teaching staff, for everyone, who have a, has a great idea uh, uh, to 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 be protected. So open to the forum to the participants. If you have and if you have any suggestions, uh, please raise your hand. One by one, we can give you answers. Till now, no suggestions are coming. I hope that they are all are thinking about this, how this process will go on and everything. Once we'll start this process, hopefully we will get good feedbacks from them. And yeah, then, one, yeah, one, we, one, yeah, one, one person is. Sadash is there, once again. Just to know that uh, we're going to open IP cell in the Techno Institute. Uh, 
um, but sir uh, what will be the procedure for the institute who are working in other uh, other places uh, how they will apply it will be so what is the procedure actually i don't know can you repeat your question and be a little loud please no no actually it is it will be uh, open in uh, your institute okay and the people who are working in other institute uh, how they will be able to access this and apply and uh, all this, this yeah yeah so this ipr sale will be across all techno institutes and techno universities okay though though the physically physically one room will be there hopefully in the techno in, techno college in the sole campus but it will cater the work services to all the institutes uh -huh. so when it is uh, going to be open so that the management will going to announce that that uh, when when it will start functioning okay okay thank you um pinaki sir we don't have any other hands i can see any other hands uh, so let, let us give some time if there is any questions please understand this ipr sale is not only for the faculty not only for the students for everyone so here the students the uh, one of the big things that what goro was talking about that suppose the final year students for example the final year students they have a project work correct if there is a good work and the assessment can be done by the ipr sale whether it will be patentable or not patentable so that assistance also will come from the ipr sale and also another thing if the pay, if the students has wants to go for a higher studies if they have in their kitty a uh, one or two patents they may get a better scholarship in the us uh, and and better recognitions so think about all these kind of things hi pinakita this is utshob uh, so can i take couple of minutes uh, uh, yeah, for a very go yeah so uh, so you know uh, from the total discussion that we had today <laughs> the importance of an ip cell within an within an university it seems to be of very paramount importance so i would share a very you know uh, pertinent example or my real life experience regarding this and probably we can all learn from it so i in my previous organization uh, so uh, you know we were working on optical character recognition ocr and we needed to do a very cutting edge research on part of it and we did not have any in house uh, expertise for it so we basically you know uh, collaborated with one of the top most engineering uh, universities uh, of india so i'm not telling the name over here right now but you can guess like eastern india one of the best you can understand and you know uh, the negotiations that happened and the agreement that was finally entered everything was okay finally everything boiled down to the ip ownership so we fund the 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 the, uh, the industry funds the money the company funds the money and uh, uh, the institute is going to give uh, resources and uh, you know personnel for doing the research and then who would be the owner of the ip that is finally created so uh, indian institutes do not think too much of ip and then i am talking about the best in india uh, so they have a very loose policy wherein you know uh, they ask for a joint ownership uh, at the moment there was a joint ownership clause our ceo specifically told we cannot do that uh, take all the ip whatever be it uh, if they want to increase the price it's fine and then finally when we had the final discussion with this university ip team they stated and the professor was also there under whom the research would be done so there was you know i'm telling you the total uh, you know project cost was something around 80 or 85 lakhs out of that 30 lakhs was equipments and those 30 lakh equipments there was a clause that we can uh, we should take it back once the research is done and the professor finally accepted a term wherein you know we give the equipments we take all the ip and at the end of the meeting our ceo was you know very happy because he is told that you know by investing you know 70 80 lakh rupee uh, you know we are getting a technology which if i had to develop in house in us or in india i have to i had to spend at least 10 to 15 crores and the same thing uh, you know and by licensing this technology and generating revenue we can make multiple million dollars out of it and if you think from the university's perspective what they got they got was something equipments were 20 30 lakhs 
so that is how universities uh, you know in india operate and time is you know is now that we should change and in my present organizations when i am uh, negotiating with top us and australian universities and also i, I we were doing a, you know a negotiation with kyoto university and you wouldn't believe the amount of awareness they have there is no question of joint ip we are paying the money cognizant is paying the money research is getting done in kyoto university and the university specifically tells that no joint ownership all ip belongs to kyoto and we give you a license to use that's it take it or go that's it so that is that is what is the awareness so university says that this is not mere work for hire you are not paying money and getting the work done because this is something very specialized research and development it cannot be done by everyone so whatever is developed belongs to us you get commercial rights so you go and you know commercialize it everything fine and give us a share of it so that is what is the you know level of awareness that needs to be developed in indian university if we have to make this university self sustainable and revenue gener we have to at the end of the day move to a revenue generation model so uh, this is a small case study and you know uh, since techno is for forming its own ip cell i would request pinaki that you know have a you know look at this and the policy should be very well defined to give room for such negotiations thank you sir thank you it is well taken i request now somik uh, dr das somik das yes sir talk, about, talk something about this uh, all together it's an uh, am i audible to all of you yeah yeah so being the convener of r and d cell of techno main sort lay with due respect to all dignitaries and my speakers and the convener and coordinator of this program i would like to uh, share a few word and that uh, the awareness we actually gathered from this uh, seven day uh, webinar uh, that's that is a that is having a great impact uh, on the knowledge part of the ip thing because uh, i just uh, second the statement made by mr utsha banerji that we professors really from india we really do not have that awareness uh, with us the majority of us after having a doctoral degree even we are not that aware the thing we have done uh, or contributed towards the research and how to uh, patenting them how to uh, keep the ip uh, along with us so this is the thing we have learned out of this uh, sev- uh, webinar which has been started on 17th may and end today so i would i am really thankful to uh, our chief patron dr gautam roy choudhury i am really thankful for the time spent by uh, megdoot and polin and uh, our honorable co chairman madam and i would like to thank our principal dr o hey i am here okay okay yes sir you are here we can see <laughs> oh, sir is i'll give you so sir is back i mean okay i would re- i'd really uh, like to thank my enter r&d cell where the idea of this uh, fdp incubated at least 6 months ago and it was been proposed by our program convener dr lokshmi shri law so pinaki sir uh, i i really uh, am thankful to you to bring the entire uh, panelist uh, dr joyanto ghosh mr ushab banerji mr prakash devroy we had wonderful sessions for last 9 days and i would really like to thank you all in person so i really hand o- i'd like to hand over the microphone to principal sir to say few words please sir uh dear uh, dear audience dear panelists dear colleagues it has been great these seven days we were together uh, most of the time i was invisible but i was really really with you and i tell you i think uh, i have got lot of uh, feedback almost everybody was in fact a large number of people were very happy with the uh, with this kind of a seminar it's probably people told me it's totally a new area and absolutely important for all the researchers who are in industry who are in academic academic institutes and uh, 
is important for this knowledge driven societies of today i tell you this is only the beginning and uh, you have already heard that we have we are starting the ipr cell the details will be available in a few days time only so you all can contact us for your ipr problems we will be happy to help it will be an end to end uh, activity so uh, any problem related to ipr whether it's eligible and uh, and if it is eligible how you go about it and how nice it the experience could be what the charges what are the uh, what is what is the government regulation everything we will be helping you besides i tell you this is just the beginning this is our first uh, webinar in, in this series very soon we will be coming back with more interesting seminars i mean also seminars like this little unusual and uh, be with us join us again in the coming seminars which will be in fact now we had we had gone for a uh, what you say domestic that is indian uh, um, uh, audience only but the next time which we do uh, probably next month itself and we will be expecting in fact international audience for it and naturally the topics will also be like that so that it can appeal to the international audience feel free to Uh, contact me in case you have anything to uh, if you have, if you have anything to share my mobile number you know, my whatsapp number is 9433099242 very easy to remember a uh, basically what you call a uh, bsnl number so followed by 99 and then 242 so that is my whatsapp number in case you feel you have special requirements or any other webinar please get in touch we will be interested to you know conduct webinar on such topics as well or any other thing related to this your uh, um, your feedback uh, i will uh, how happy you were you were or even if you were not happy even if there were some uh, comments anything constructive and critical is always welcome thank you both thank you everybody Pinaki sir, there is a one more. Thank you, Principal sir. Pinaki sir, there is a one more question from Mr. Shudip Chakravarti. Yeah, yeah, please. Uh, Shudip, Mr. Shudip Chakravarti, please go ahead with your question. Please go ahead. Sir, am I audible? Yes, 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 you are. Okay. Okay. Sir, I have a specific question. Suppose. suppose the faculty member of our institute is one of the phd research scholar of any other university then what happens if the faculty member wishes to share or publish their idea or data under an open access license after their defense or even before it okay uh, if i understand correctly that one of the research research person is associated with different university and the faculty is uh, within techno correct this is your question yes yes sir okay so in that case that uh, uh, if that there is any ip has been arised on that so that will be uh, based on because the where the where the it work primarily if that work primarily outside techno then the uh, according to that university's guideline they can own the ip if the primary work has been done in the techno then techno university will be an sid but being a inventor there will be no bar it can be uh, the faculty from one institute student from the other institute can both of them can be the inventor of that work the main problem will come with the assignee uh, ownership so that can be discussed and uh, we will we will uh, write down we will capture all these things in the policy pinaki there is something very interesting can i yeah. uh, can i chip in please please pinaki is very interesting in the sense that this sudip to Uh, is your nephew? Why? Why I tell you, Chudip Tos PhD guy did his PhD ten years back with me. So, so in that sense, Chudip Tos is my grandson. 
Is that okay? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so in that yeah. sense, you need to Thank you, sir. your nephew as well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> On a lighter vein, of course. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. Fine. Thank you. So, Pinaki, sir, uh, there are no more questions. Orchida, Orchida, I now uh, request Sudipto, the who was hosting for all these sessions and being a director of one of uh, the colleges of the techno. I request yeah. Sudipto can should talk something on that. Of course, of course. Yeah. Shudipto, who is named here as Techno Main Host or like yeah. host. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you, all. sir. Uh, thank you. We to are very all, uh, Yeah, no, uh, I'm very much pleasure. Uh, you know, I'm communicating with you and everyone. Uh, First of all, uh, you know, everyone in this group, a uh, maximum people is from, uh, from my college, you know. Uh, so, whatever the sessions is going on, uh, Utsop sir and others, amazing sessions, uh, you know, uh, whatever I am feel. I, uh, you know, I attend all the sessions every time I, I am there uh, because, you know, with, um, uh, I am there as a host, so I am uh, follow the every sessions. I, lo I learn a lot, um, uh, but I have some queries I will be discuss when IPR sale will be, uh, you know, already established. So I will be um, asked to our uh, principal sir, Ujit sir, and as well as Pinaki sir. And uh, it is a very, very, very good step uh, is taken by uh, Techno. It's it's required because uh, we are mainly focusing on the, you know, UG and PG students, not related to the any research activity. So uh, with the help of the IPR, it will be helped to the uh, every faculties because um, you know the IPR uh, is very much essential and very much requirement for our day-to-day -day life. Uh, till uh, now, I can say, uh, whenever I uh, filled up my file to IPR, uh, I already filled up. But you know, it will be under uh, any other university, not under Techno India, because there is a no sale of Techno India. So that's the uh, biggest challenge for me that I cannot, uh, you know, establish the, the IPR in the name of Techno India. But I am working in the last. More than uh, more than 13 years in a Techno India, but I'm not filled up the IPR from Techno India. So it can be possible from today onwards. And uh, thank you, Abhijit sir, uh, to take this kind of decisions. Thank you, Shomikda. Thank you, Orchita ma'am. And uh, thanks a lot to everyone, every participation. Thank you, Pinaki shares. And thanks, thanks a lot. Okay, thank you. Over to Orchita. Okay, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, so, as we come to the closure of our FDP, it gives me an immense pleasure in thanking our esteemed principal, R&D committee members, the respected resource persons, and our dear participants. And we, uh, for this time, we have received a participation from across the nation, and I'm sure the, uh, people are from outside our state they have enjoyed thoroughly, like uh, like uh, participants from TMSL and TIU also. Our appreciation assumes a greater value since this FDP was conducted during lockdown period and because our proceedings was further hampered by this super cyclone Amphan, which actually uh, made the basic utility scarce over the last week. We sincerely apologize for the multiple postponements of the scheduled sessions and due to unforeseen and unavoidable circumstances caused by this cyclone. And surely our heartfelt thanks to Dr. Pinaki Ghosh, mentor of the entire program, the, uh, the mentor of the entire program, Mr. Vutshaw Banerjee, Mr. Jointa Ghosh, Mr. Prakash Devroy, for their insightful discussions over the seven sessions of this FDP on IPR. Just let me summarize quick, very quickly the topics and subtopics that has been covered over the past few days. In session one, which has been uh, taken by Dr. Pinaki Ghosh over there, we had a discussion on intellectual property rights. Uh, uh, basic definition of intellectual property rights, types of intellectual property, subject matter for protection, procedures for intellectual property protection, and advantages of intellectual property protection. And definitely he has discussed this with the help of wonderful case studies. Now moving to session two, three, and four, which has been, uh, uh, which has been taken by Mr. Utshaw Banerjee, and uh, where we have been enlightened with patents, uh, where in the uh, session two, we had a discussion on patents, life cycle of patents, uh, prior art, and how it is connected to uh, patents, and what are the criteria for patentability. Moving to session three, we had an introduction on patents, once again, where anatomy of patents 
patents have been discussed patent infringement do's and don'ts related to patents and advantages of a patent portfolio over there he has given wonderful case studies through which he has actually elaborated the concepts very clearly and i'm sure all all the participants have thoroughly enjoyed these sessions then moving to session 4 we had an ai concept of ai and intellectual property what there what is ai has been discussed in uh, in length evolution of ai 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 patent proliferation has been discussed issues in present ip regime and problem solution approach over there has been all discussed and he has given wonderful uh, solutions to this and uh, he has given uh, he has kept it is open forum whether, whether we are actually liking these suggestions and if you have any suggestions regarding this and that is also he is going to welcome this uh, suggestions now after this uh, super cyclone session we had session 5 6 and 7 and i'm i'm uh, it's very uh, sad that some of our regular participants have missed some of these sessions uh, some of the sessions and they couldn't connect due to connectivity issues and since our panelists were actually uh, engaged uh, actually had their own commitments outside commitments that's why we couldn't uh, extend this time period so moving to the session 5 we had intellectual property in academia which is very much relevant in uh, today's area and we being the faculty members we should have a very clear cut idea about this over there importance of ip in academia has been discussed types of ip under consideration academia ip creation uh, statistics was showing how it is actually progressing ip issues in industry uh, industry academia col collaboration and how this uh, these are going to be addressed copyright issues in publications has been discussed in detail and researchers dilemma, dilemma to publish or to patent whether i'm going to publish my research or to pay, go for a patent and ip portfolio for research thesis and do's and don'ts once again what what, what we as research i mean as a faculty or as a research fellow what we can do and what we can can do now moving to session 6 which has been taken by uh, mr prok uh, earlier session has been uh, conducted by mr joint dr joint gosh and now moving to this one uh, session 6 and session 7 has been uh, conducted by mr prokash debra where we have have a discussion in session 6 on intellectual property and startups where startups has been explained very well where different types of startups has been, startups has been explained importance of ip for startups startup and patent landscape how this uh, concepts uh, of uh, concept of ip is actually coming into the scene of uh, startups and what are the ip issues that are actually involved into this process and uh, how uh, once you are going for this ip how startups are becoming successful and once again do's and don'ts now moving to the last session on today's session where technology transfer has been uh, discussed where we have an in depth discussion on technology transfer types of technology transfer transfer ip issues and ip sustainability and once again do's and don'ts and he has shared a few case studies over there i'm sure everyone has enjoyed the sessions thoroughly Uh, now as far as the assessment is concerned as we said we at the beginning of the session that we, the, at the end of the session you will have an assessment it is going to be a multiple choice based question uh, questions uh, comprising of uh, 20 questions for which allotted time is given only 15 minutes that's not only 15 minutes i was looking for a 10 minutes so we have pulled it out to 15 minutes the test date is going to be 31st may sunday and time for the same is going to be 7 pm i repeat the assessment will be conducted on a multiple choice based questions and date is going to be 31st may sunday time is, uh, time is 7 pm so the link will be forwarded at 7 pm sharp and it will link will stop accepting its responses after 15 minutes right along with this link also you will have a, you will get on feedback link also please do fill up the feedback link uh, feedback form that will be provided to you and please share your valuable thoughts valuable feedback whatever the, the way principal sir was telling if you didn't like the session even you have the every right to sh share it with us definitely we will get a chance to rectify ourselves and please uh, uh, you have to submit the both the uh, i mean you have to submit this feedback form by 31st itself to get your certificate once uh, Uh, we will get both the feedback and as well as the assessment sheet then your certificate uh, you will uh, get your e certificate on behalf of the technomen sol lake our beloved principal and our organizing committee members i thank you all for your enthusiastic participation and we wish you all the very best 
uh, and have a great day. Orchi, 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 there is a hand. Yeah. Oh, sure, sure. Once again, Mr. Abir Ghosh is there. Yes, yes, sir. Hello, madam. This is Abir Ghosh. Yeah, yeah, sure. I have a question yeah. that are you going to share the matches? Uh, because you know, because of these technical problems after the cyclone, we could not. I could not even connect to the entire course on one day, entire discussion on one day. So I have missed out on okay, all those. Okay. So would you be kind enough to share the PPTs with us, such that we can prepare well for the assessment and then uh, you know uh, attempt for the test? Uh, sorry, sir, we cannot uh, forward these PPTs. But what we can do is that if we have recorded all the sessions, we are going to send these recorded links. You will get all the recorded links on YouTube. And on seven days recorded links you will get, and you can go, go for the you can uh, watch all these videos that's over there. Nice and that's, nice. that's nice enough. So, when the recording will be shared with us, maybe by the end today, by by today or by tomorrow, okay, as soon okay. as I'll get all the recordings, where I'm uh, going to share it. That will be that will yeah, be nice. Sure. No problem. Okay, thank you, thank you. And you will be sharing this, uh, this uh, assessment test via uh, WhatsApp chat group or maybe no, by email. Uh, Google. Google form. Google. There will be a Google form link which will be shared by via mail, email. Via mail. Via mail. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Koshik. Uh, Koshik sir is also there. Koshik Mukherjee. Uh, yeah, he has a question. Hello. Yes. Uh, please go ahead. Ha, am I audible? Yes, yeah, yes, you are Actually, uh, about the MCQ question here, yeah, my question is it will be on uh, logic based questions or on data based questions. There has been many data has been provided, like how many numbers of patents, how many, what is the status of which country in no, which no, year. The yeah, MCQ there, questions will be on analyzed based, I think. There, there will be no. Data -based said you are the best person to answer this yeah, question. There will be no data based question. All will be the uh, concept based questions. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other queries from anyone regarding assessment? And people who are definitely participants are looking for some handouts. If uh, if uh, panelists who don't provide any handouts due to their busy schedule, please go through the Google. Google is the best master. You have all the topic headlines. So if you search it, you will get all the details over there. And we are providing links uh, for the for each and every session, and hopefully that will suffice. Thank you. Thank you to all. We're the end of our session. Yeah. With this, we come to the end of our seven day FDP. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining with us. Thank, thank Special thanks to our panelists. Hopefully, as and when required, we will get assistance from you all. Thank you so much for being with us. Have a great day. Thank you all. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much.